Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the arc length of a function. So let's say you have a function that goes from point A to point B, like this blue function here. So how do you find the length between point A and point B? Well, first let's look at the pink line. We know that this horizontal line goes from 2 to 6, so the length must be 4. That's pretty easy. But for the blue line, you would need to use formulas. The first formula you can use is L is equal to the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus F prime of X to the power of 2 DX. Or you can use the second formula, which is the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus F prime of Y to the power of 2 DY. So go ahead and copy down these formulas and we'll go through some examples. Let's find the length of the function y is equal to 2 over 3 times x to the power of 3 over 2 between 0 and 2. So this is what the function looks like, but they only want us to find the length between 0 and 2, so basically the orange part. The first thing I'm going to do is write down the formula. Since this formula is in terms of x, we're going to use the formula l is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, so f prime of x, to the power of 2 dx. We want to solve for f prime of x to the power of 2. So first of all, what is f of x? Well, f of x is just 2 over 3 times x to the power of 3 over 2. Now we have to find the derivative, so f prime of x. And that is 2 over 3 times 3 over 2 times x to the power of 1 over 2. And this is simply equal to x to the power of 1 over 2. Which means that f prime of x to the power of 2, so f prime of x to the power of 2, is equal to x to the power of 1 half to the power of 2. And that's simply x. Now we can go ahead and replace f prime of x to the power of 2 with simply x. Now how about a and b? But well, that's very simple because a is the starting point which is at 0 and b is at 2. So let's go ahead and update it. And the last step is just to evaluate this integral. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that this is equal to f2, so f2 minus f at 0. So what exactly is big F? Well, big F, big F of x is simply the integral of the square root of 1 plus x dx. Now we have to use u substitution. So let u, let u be equal to x plus 1. So du over dx is equal to 1, plus du is equal to dx. We're going to replace 1 plus x with u, and then dx with du, because dx is du. So the square root of u is simply u to the power of 1 half. And after you integrate this, you will get u to the power of 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 plus c. And so when you divide by a fraction, it means you multiply by its reciprocal. So you get 2 over 3 times u to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. Finally, we put u back to our original variable, which is x. So this is equal to 2 over 3 times x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. What is f2 and what is f0? Well, let's find out. So f2, we substitute x with 2. So 2 over 3 times x, which is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 to the power of 3 over 2. And we don't put the c in there because we substitute a number. So how about f at 0? 2 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 over 2, which is simply 2 over 3. So f2 is 2 over 3 times 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2 over 3. And after we simplify this expression, we should get our final answer. So let me show you how to do it. So 2 over 3 is the same as 2 times 3 to the power of negative 1. And multiply by 3 to the power of 3 over 2. And then minus 2 over 3. So this is 2 times 3 to the power of 1 half minus 2 over 3. So we get 2 times the square root of 3 minus 2 over 3. And this is the exact same answer as the textbook. So there you go. That is the length from 0 to 2, which is this orange part. Let's do one more. 
we want to find the length of the function y is equal to 2 over 3 times x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 between 0 and 1 on the x-axis. So because this function is in terms of x, we will use the formula that's in terms of x. And that would be equal to L, which is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, so f prime of x to the power of 2 dx. So what is f of x? Well, f of x, first of all, is 2 over 3 times x squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. How about the derivative f prime of x? Well, that is 2 over 3 times 3 over 2 times x squared plus 1 to the power of 1 half. And because of the chain rule, you also have to take the derivative of whatever is inside of the parentheses here. So that would be d over dx of x squared plus 1. And simplifying this, we get x squared plus 1 to the power of 1 half times 2x. And that is 2x times x squared plus 1 to the power of 1 over 2. We found our f prime of x. But how about to the power of 2? Well, let's see. So f prime of x to the power of 2 is equal to 2x times x squared plus 1 to the power of 1 half and then to the power of 2. So this would be 4x squared times x squared plus 1. That's it. So this would be 4 times x to the power of 4 plus 4x squared. And let's go ahead and put this into this part right here. There is a trick that you need to know that can help you solve this very quickly and very easily. But first of all, what is a and b? Well, a and b are just 0 and 1, so let's fix that. If you are able to simplify this part, so this part, if you're able to simplify it into the form a plus b to the power of 2, if we have the square root on top, then this will result in just a plus b. And this will simplify our integral a lot. So we want to find, first of all, we want to find this, which is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this takes some practice, but let me show you the idea of it. So for a square, I'm going to look here, and it seems like this is a square. I'm going to take a guess. So this is 4x to the power of 4. And for 2ab, I'm going to guess it is 4x square, and you'll see why in a second. And the last one is just 1. So this means, this means that a square is 4x to the power of 4. So a is equal to 2 times x to the power of 2, and we only care about positive numbers for now. Now, how about b? Well, b squared is just 1, so b is just 1. And finally, what is 2ab? Well, 2ab would be equal to 2 times 2x squared times 1. And what does that give you? Well, that gives you 4x squared, which is indeed this one. Okay, so because of that, we can say that our a plus b to the power of 2 is going to be, well, a is 2x squared plus b, which is 1, into the power of 2. We replace the inside part with 2 times x to the power of 2 plus 1 to the power of 2. And let's go ahead and get rid of the square root sign because these two will cancel out. So this will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x squared plus 1 dx. And from the fundamental theorem of calculus, we also know that this is f1 minus f0. What is big F of x? Well, big F of x is just the integral of 2 times x to the power of 2 plus 1 dx. And after you integrate this, you will get 2 over 3 times x to the power of 3 plus x. Now we want to find big F of 1. And this will be equal to 2 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 plus 1, which is 2 over 3 plus 3 over 3, which gives you 5 over 3. How about F0? f0 is 2 over 3 times 0 to the power of 3 plus 0, which is also 0. So f1 minus f0 will be equal to 5 over 3 minus 0. And that will just give you 5 over 3. So let's erase this. And this is our final answer, or this is the length of the function between 0 and 1 on the x-axis. Let's do one last example, but this time the function is in terms of y and not in terms of x. We want to find the length of this function between 1 and 2 on the y-axis. So because this function is in terms of y, we're going to use the formula in terms of y. 
that's the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of y, so f prime of y to the power of 2 dy. So what is a and b? Well, a is 1 and b is 2. What is f of y? So f of y is equal to y to the power of 4 over 8 plus 1 over 4 times y to the power of 2. And this makes sense, right? Because this function, f of y, we have the variable y. So that's why everything here is in terms of y. And we can rewrite this as 1 over 8 times y to the power of 4 plus 1 over 4 times y to the power of negative 2. And now we want to find f prime of y or the derivative. So this would be 1 over 8 times 4 times y to the power of 3 plus 1 over 4 times negative 2 times y to the power of negative 3. So this gives you 1 half times y to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3. So we found our f prime and it's time to find f prime to the power of 2. So this is equal to 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3 and this entire thing to the power of 2. This is equal to 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3 to the power of 2 minus 2 times 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3 times 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3 and then plus 1 over 2 and we have y to the power of 3 at the denominator and the entire thing to the power of 2. So this is 1 over 4 y to the power of 6 and here, as you can see, that these twos will cancel out. As well, the y to the power of 3 and y to the power of 3 here will also cancel out. So we get minus 1 over 2, and then plus 1 over 4, and y to the power of 6. And we substitute it back into the equation. So here we can see 1 minus 1 over 2 is positive 1 over 2. So let's go ahead and change that. Now, just like last time, we want to convert whatever is under the square root sign into the form a plus b to the power of 2. So this would be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this is actually very easy. For a squared, I will pick 1 over 4. So we have 1 over 4 times y to the power of 6. Now, how about 2ab and b squared? Well, for b squared, I will pick this one. And there's a reason for that. Let me write it down first. So 1 over y to the power of 6. Now, if you see here, you have 2 times a times b, right? So when you multiply these together, you have y to the power of 6 multiplied by the y to the power of 6 in the denominator. These will cancel out, and that will give you 1 over 2. So that's a great hint to look out for. So we, here we have a squared is equal to 1 over 4 times y to the power of 6. So a is equal to 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3. b squared is 1 over 4 times y to the power of 6. So b is just 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3. Now how about 2ab? Well, 2 times a times b is equal to 2 times 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3, or this one right here. And then this is the b, so times 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3. And let's see what cancels out. Well, first of all, the y to the power of 3 and this y to the power of 3 will cancel out. We have this 2 and this 2 will cancel out. At the end, you will get 1 over 2, which is exactly our middle term here, which is exactly our middle term. So therefore, we can rewrite a plus b to the power of 2 as 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3. That's the a term plus the b term, which is this one. So 1 over 2 times y to the power of 3 and the entire thing to the power of 2. Now let's go ahead and put this into our square root and replace it with this part. And here you go. So the power of 2 and the square root can cancel each other out. So let me just erase it. This is equal to f2 minus f1. Now let's go ahead and find big F of y. So big F of y would be the integral of 1 over 2 y to the power of 3 plus 1 over 2 times y to the power of negative 3 dy. This is 1 over 2 times 1 over 4 times y to the power of 4 plus 1 over 2 times negative 1 over 2 times y to the power of negative 2 plus c. So 
this is 1 over 8 times y to the power of 4 minus 1 over 4 times y to the power of negative 2 plus and we should bring the y to the power of negative 2 to the denominator so 1 over 8 times y to the power of 4 minus 1 over 4 times y to the power of 2 plus c and then i'm just going to clean this up a little bit let's calculate f2 and f1 so f2 is 1 over 8 times 2 to the power of 4 that would be 16 minus 1 over 4 times 2 to the power of 2 that's just 4 so this is 2 minus 1 over 16 which is 31 over 16 then how about f of 1 oh that's just 1 over 8 minus 1 over 4 which is negative 1 over 8 therefore f2 minus f1 will be 31 over 16 minus negative 1 over 8 that's the same thing as 31 over 16 plus 1 over 8 and that will give you 33 over 16. so that's it this right here is the answer and also the length of this function between 1 and 2 on the y-axis and that's basically it for today i hope you guys enjoy this video if you guys have any questions please put them down in the comment sections below and i'll try to answer them as soon as possible and also if you guys haven't subscribed and like this video please do so and that means a lot and you guys would buy me coffee for free